G'day and welcome back to Project 200. Today I'm going to be doing a brake rotor and pad upgrade. I'll be using the best rotors I could find for the Land Cruiser 200, the DBA 4000 series T3s. They're made in Australia using high carbon iron alloy for excellent high temperature performance. They also feature a unique ventilation system to reduce heat and a slotted face which helps to maximise braking under extreme conditions by expelling dust and gas and reducing pad glazing. I've been running the 4000 series rotors on my GTP for about five years now, including some track work, and they really do provide fantastic braking performance. To match the rotors, I'm installing DBA's new Extreme Performance brake pads front and rear. They use a carbon fibre based friction material for superior performance over regular pads and they continue to deliver high levels of friction at much greater temperatures, which makes them ideal for heavy four wheel drives like the 200 series, especially if you've got a GVM upgrade or you tow regularly. Finally, even though they probably still have some life left in them, I'm going to be replacing the 200's handbrake shoes. Given the relatively low parts cost and the fact that the rear rotors will be off anyway, it's a perfect time to replace them. Before I get started on my install, it's important to mention safety. The brakes are one of the most important safety systems on the vehicle. If you don't know what you're doing, then please have the installation done professionally. Begin by chocking the rear wheels, then raise the front of the vehicle and support it on chassis stands. Remove the front wheels and put them under the chassis for extra safety. Ensure that you're wearing appropriate PPE, particularly eye protection, for the entire brake upgrade procedure. On the front caliper, remove the pin retaining spring, then slide out the two pins that hold the pads in place. Then remove the anti-rattle spring. Next, slide out the two brake pads. You may need to wiggle them a little or gently lever them out of position. Remove the brake line bracket from the steering knuckle. Then using a 17mm socket, remove the two bolts holding the caliper in place. Lift the caliper assembly out of place and hold it up with a piece of wire so that it's not hanging on the brake line. If it won't just slide off the hub, insert an 8mm bolt into one of the provided threaded holes in the rotor and screw the bolt in to push the rotor off the hub. It's then vital to clean the hub with a wire brush or emery paper to remove any rust scale and ensure that there's a smooth, flat surface for the new rotor to sit on. Otherwise, it can result in uneven rotor wear and vibration. The new rotors come with an oily coating to prevent rust, so they require cleaning before installation. Spray some brake cleaner onto a rag and thoroughly wipe over the face of the rotor on both sides. Avoid spraying the rotor itself, otherwise it will damage the painted sections. Next, you need to push the pistons back into the caliper. Open the bleed valve on the caliper to stop the brake fluid from being pushed back up the brake lines. Insert a spreading tool into the caliper and wind it out until all the pistons have been pushed all the way back into the caliper. Retighten the bleed valve before you remove the spreading tool. The correct torque is 11 Nm. Insert the new brake rotor onto the hub. Then reattach the caliper assembly to the hub and tension the two bolts to 99 Nm. Toyota recommend using new bolts rather than reusing the old ones. You can then reattach the brake line bracket to the steering knuckle. Now it's time to install the new pads into the caliper. Apply some of the supplied high temperature grease to the edges of the pads as shown. Then place the pads into the caliper. You then need to install the pad retaining pins and the anti-rattle spring. The spring needs to be installed before the lower pin. Finally, reinstall the pin retaining spring. Repeat this entire process on the other side of the vehicle. Then replace the wheels and lower the vehicle to the ground. Tension the front wheel nuts in a diagonal sequence to ensure that the wheel and rotors are flat against the hub face. The correct torque depends on the wheel. Check with the manufacturer. Now moving to the rear. Chock the front wheels, then raise the rear of the vehicle and support it on chassis stands. Remove the rear wheels and again for extra safety, place them under the chassis. Ensure that the handbrake is not applied. Then using a 17mm socket, remove the two bolts at the rear holding the caliper assembly in place. 
Then remove the caliper and hold it up on a piece of wire so that it's not hanging on the brake line. Next, remove the rotor. Again, you can use an 8mm bolt to release the rotor from the hub if it doesn't slip straight off. If you're still having trouble, you can try backing off the handbrake adjuster through the access hole. To replace the handbrake shoes, grab the special service tools from Amiyama to make the job much easier and safer. The links to find the correct tools are on the website. Begin by removing the return spring by inserting the end of the tool into the hole as shown and rotating the tool 180 degrees. Using the driver tool, you can then remove the hold down spring, cup and pin from the rearmost shoe by pushing it in and twisting it 90 degrees. Using the spring removal tool again, release the tension spring at the bottom of the shoe, then remove the shoe and the adjuster. Moving to the frontmost shoe, remove the hold down spring, cup, pin and the shoe itself in the same way as you did for the rear shoe. You should now clean the backing plate and the other components to remove dirt, grease and lining residue. As with the front hubs, you also need to thoroughly clean the hub face with a wire brush or emery paper to remove rust scale and burrs. Disassemble the handbrake adjuster and clean it thoroughly with brake cleaner, then apply grease to the threads, socket and slots on either end. Next, apply high temperature grease to the anchor block and the raised sections of the backing plate where the handbrake shoes make contact. You can now reinstall the frontmost brake shoe. This next part can be quite fiddly, but you then need to push the spring and the hold down cup over the pin. Align the slot in the cup to the top of the pin, then using the special driver tool, push the cup and the spring in until the top of the pin comes through the cup, then twist it 90 degrees and release. Moving on to the rearmost shoe. Hold it in position on the back plate, then insert the tension spring and adjuster to join the bottom of the shoes together. The adjuster should be oriented so that winding the outside upwards extends the adjuster. With the rearmost shoe in position, push the hold down pin through the backing plate and the shoe, then install the spring and the cup using the same method as for the first shoe. Ensure that the shoe lever is in the correct position between the shoes, then reinstall the return spring using the special service tool. As you did for the front end of the car, you then need to thoroughly clean both faces of the rotor. Do the same for the inside of the handbrake drum. You can then install the new rotor onto the hub. Rotate it so that the hole in the rotor is aligned to the handbrake adjuster at the bottom. Then use a small screwdriver to wind out the adjuster until the handbrake binds on the rotor. Then back the adjuster off approximately eight notches. You can then make minor adjustments either way to ensure that the handbrake isn't binding and the lever travel is not excessive. Place a rag over the rotor, then sit the caliper on top. Remove the old brake pads, ensuring that the clips remain in place. Then slide the mount off the caliper assembly. Loosen the bleed valve, then insert the spreading tool and push the piston all the way back into the caliper. You can then re-tighten the bleed valve to 11nm and remove the spreading tool. Apply some high temperature lithium based grease to the slide pins, then reassemble the caliper, ensuring that the rubber seals locate correctly on the pins. Apply some of the supplied high temperature grease to the edges of the new pad, then insert them into the caliper. Ensure that you don't get any of the grease onto the faces of the pads. You can then place the caliper into position and tension the bolts to 95 Nm. As with the front calipers, Toyota recommend that you use new bolts. Don't forget to install the rubber grommet into the handbrake adjustment hole on the rotor. You can now repeat this entire procedure for the other rear brake. With the rear end now complete, you can then replace the wheels and lower the vehicle to the ground. Correctly tension the wheel nuts using a diagonal pattern to ensure that the wheel and rotor sit square on the hub, and be sure to recheck them after driving. Finally, check the brake fluid reservoir to ensure that the level is correct and top it up if required. Once you've got the new brakes fitted, it's vital that you test and bed them in correctly. Before you even leave the driveway, check to make sure that you've got good pedal feel and that the brakes operate as expected. 
Then head out to a quiet road and complete five to 10 applications of the brakes, slowing from about 50 kilometers an hour to about 10 kilometers an hour using moderate pedal pressure. Then avoid heavy braking or dragging the brakes for the next couple of hundred kilometers. These two procedures will ensure that you get the best life and optimum performance from the brakes. I have to say that I've always considered the 200 standard brakes to be pretty good, which is the main reason why I haven't been in any hurry to upgrade them. But from the first time I stepped on the brake pedal after installing these new pads and rotors, I regretted not upgrading them earlier. The improved stopping power is substantial. If you press the brake as usual, then you'll probably find yourself heading towards the windscreen. And considering that the DBA pads and rotors are considerably cheaper than the genuine Toyota versions, installing them during routine maintenance is a win-win. Depending on the model and year, there are a few variations available, so have a look at the Project 200 website to find the correct rotor and pad part numbers for the year and model of your 200 series. See you next time.